Item Number SCP-1987-J Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All printed copies or recordings of SCP-1987-J are to be destroyed, except for a single printed copy to be stored in a locked safe at Site-5150. One electric guitar of any standard model is to be made available for testing purposes. As of Testing is to be conducted by and on D-Class personnel only. Any people or objects affected by SCP-1987-J are to be examined immediately after conclusion of test and archived or neutralized if necessary. Female staff members are not to be exposed to SCP-1987-J's effect under any circumstances. In the event of a manifestation of SCP-1987-J-1, the D-Class responsible for activating SCP-1987-J is to accept its request. No staff are to interact with SCP-1987-J-1 directly. Test subject may be reassigned in event of failure. In event of success, procedure counter XK-25R-624 is to be enacted immediately. Mobile Task Force Omega-2112, the Beaumont Police Department, is to monitor major and independent music publishers and online music distribution networks for any indication of an independent rediscovery of SCP-1987-J. In the event of a containment breach, all offending media is to be removed from public consumption. A mobile task force Omega-2112 is authorized to execute Procedure Kasem, Procedure Sumner, and Procedure Cobain at 05 discretion. Description. SCP-1987-J is a sequence of chords intended to be played on electric guitar, which produces several anomalous effects when played. SCP-1987-J has been discovered independently by several individuals since the development of the electric guitar in the 1930s. The earliest known written copy exists in the form of a handwritten tablature dated to 1965, with a note, to J.H. Pretty cool, huh? L.R. In the margin. Extensive testing has indicated any person who is aware of how SCP-1987-J is intended to sound when played, and has access to an electric guitar or an amplifier, is able to produce SCP-1987-J, regardless of any previously documented ability to play guitar or lack thereof. Once play begins, anomalous effects begin to occur within the area where SCP-1987-J is audible after approximately 1.6 seconds and continue to manifest every 10 to 30 seconds until play ceases or SCP-1987-J-1 manifests. No specific pattern as to the effects produced by SCP-1987-J-1 has been discerned to date. All effects produced by SCP-1987-J are permanent and are not reversed by cessation of play and subsequent exposure. Effects documented as a result of SCP-1987-J include Perception by onlookers that the player is unusually physically attractive or charismatic Spontaneous lengthening of the player's hair and or enlargement of genitals Apparent age of all females within an area of effect changing to approximately 18 years and or spontaneous manifestation of 8 to 10 such individuals that no female subjects are present. Concurrent transmogrification of subjects' clothes into thong bikinis, lingerie, or leather fetish gear have occurred in 68% of documented instances. Extensive testing has been authorized to determine where effects are correlated. Transformation of late model automobiles in area of effect of vintage hot rods, muscle cars, or custom motorcycles. Spontaneous manifestation of large quantities of distilled alcoholic beverages. Spontaneous manifestation of sparks, pyrotechnics, or large fans. Immunity of the player to bullets. Resurrection of the dead either to their previous state or as zombies loyal to the player. Spontaneous manifestations of dragons, dinosaurs, or scantily clad female angels loyal to the player. Liquefaction of observers' facial features. Spontaneous pregnancy in fertile female subjects. Spontaneous pregnancy in infertile female subjects, and spontaneous pregnancy in male subjects. Testing has determined that all above effects are only produced when SCP-1987-J is performed on electric guitar. Attempts to produce SCP-1987-J on acoustic guitar, keyboard, banjo, ukulele, or saxophone have produced a mimetic field which causes all observers to view the player as uncool or a sellout, with extended test sessions resulting in permanent <laughs> testicles. SCP-1987-J-1 is an entity resembling a Caucasian male of approximately 25 years old, which to date has manifested on any occasion when performance of SCP-1987-J has passed a collective total of 3 minutes, 1 second in duration. SCP-1987-J-1, which has variously introduced itself by the names Count Rockula, Sir Roxalot, and the Lord of the Strings, will immediately upon manifesting order the player to cease and challenge him or her to what is described as an epic rockdown of Rocktimate Roxtony, 
which have been observed to take the form of a guitar duel between SCP-1987-1 and the player, with the offer of ultimate rockness if the player is successful. The nature of ultimate rockness is yet to be determined. In all observed instances, SCP-1987-J-1 has declared itself the winner and demanifested, followed by the player's spontaneous transformation into an instance of SCP-1987-J-2, an unattractive male, regardless of the player's original gender, approximately 45 years of age, wearing the uniform of a gas station attendant which identifies itself as Earl and claims to be a fan of country music. All instances of SCP-1987-J-2 have proven unable to produce SCP-1987-J or to display any degree of skill with the guitar, and has been assigned to the maintenance of the Foundation Motor Pool. Memo from Dr. Klein, as of… I am hereby forbidding all staff other than D-Class from conducting tests in SCP-1987-J. To date, 38 researchers at Site-5150 alone have become iterations of SCP-1987-J-2 while attempting to acquire the power of ultimate rockness. Site-1137 is now facing a five-month backlog on critical laboratory work. However, we possess well in excess of the required automobile maintenance staff, and will have to resort to assigning the SCP-1987-J-2 into the D-Class due to the lack of work to assign them. As tempting as Ultimate Rockness may be, we have more important concerns this time.